Hello and welcome to Use Your Noodles YouTube channel. I'm Anja Bulgar, a food photographer and blogger, and today I'm going to show you how I make my own backdrops for food photography. There are of course many many ways to make a DIY backdrop and today I'm going to show you how I make a backdrop that has sort of a concrete look. For this project I'm going to use an old wooden board from one of my old backdrops. Uh, I actually stored this old backdrop outside during the winter and it started peeling off so I want to make a new one. I removed all the parts that were falling off with the jointing spatula and now it's ready to create a new backdrop. So here's what we'll need to make this backdrop. A tile joint filler, a container for mixing this joint filler, some water, mixing sticks, a jointing spatula, some paper because accidents happen, an old kitchen sponge, some colors, in this case I'm going to use white and black since I'm going for a grey backdrop, a brush and a container for mixing your colors. If you're using multiple colors you can use multiple containers but since I'm only using white and black one is enough. First I'm going to mix the dry jointing filler with some water. I'm going to add just a little water and add later if I need it. I'm looking for a dense consistency where I can see some green uh, and it's not completely smooth but I need to be careful not to make it too dry otherwise it will fall off easily. So if I see that it's too runny then I can add more joint filler. Once I have the mix ready, I can use a spatula to rub it all over the board. I want to create some texture, so I'm not smoothing out the edges. I actually want those edges and bumps because they create a beautiful texture. I just go around the whole board and cover it with my mixture. Uh, there's still some texture from my old backdrop, so I'm going, going to leave some places as they are. I'm using a sponge to create some extra texture, but I need to be careful to use this sponge while this mixture is still uh, kind of wet because it dries out very quickly. Just a quick apologize, I forgot to set my focus to manual, so you're going to see my hair in focus a lot. I'm so sorry about that, I still hope this video is really helpful for you. So now I'm just repeating the whole process of applying the mix and uh, dapping it with uh, the sponge uh, throughout the, the whole board. I noticed some of my old backdrop was still peeling off so I just used the spatula to remove it and then apply the new mix. Once my mixture is dry, which usually takes at least a few hours or you can even leave it uh, to dry out during the night or the whole day, uh, then I can go around my board with my hands and just try to remove those bigger pieces that could maybe make, create some lumps while I'm painting the backdrop. So now I'm mixing my white paint because it had some liquid on top and I want it uniform. Then I'm adding some black color to my container and add some white color to get quite a dark grayish color. So it probably looks like there's not enough paint, but don't worry, I'm just using a tiny bit of this dark gray color paint uh, to dab all over the um, backdrop, but not covering the, the entire backdrop. Those are going, going to be the accent colors, the colors of uh, the holes. So by uh, creating a texture, we also created some holes um, and we want to fill those holes, but not throughout the, the entire backdrop. And now I'm adding a bit of more white so I get a bit lighter grayish color because I just don't want the whole backdrop to ha have the same hue of the holes. So I'm just going around and do the same. 
with this color. So now I'm mixing my main color. This is the color that's going to be the most obvious in this backdrop. So it's sort of like a medium darkish grayish color. And now I'm using a sponge to dab the paint all over the backdrop. Uh, so this is the main color, so I want to cover pretty much the almost the entire uh, part of the backdrop. I just want to leave bits and pieces of blacks and those um, whites uh, and gray from the old backdrop. So I don't want to dab too much color at once and I don't want to dab too hard. So in some parts I'm going to dab harder, in some parts I'm going to dab a little bit uh, softer uh, to create this concre concrete uh, feel of the backdrop. So once I'm finished with my main color, I, I'm adding uh, a bit of a lighter grayish color uh, so I create more of a texture and this distracts, distressed concrete feel. I add more of this brighter color in the center than on the edges. So if I'm shooting from above, it's already sort of like um, a vignette. So here I'm using just a tiny amount of uh, light grey color uh, that I'm applying with my brush and just very lightly brush over the center and some also over the edges of the backdrop. I don't want to press too hard because I just want a tiny amount of the paint to be on the backdrop and I want to paint in different directions. Once the backdrop is dry, you can seal it with a transparent matte polish. So this is how the final backdrop looks like. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. And if you love it and want to see more of it, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for being here and until next time.